Okay, so hello everyone. Good day. Um, today we are going to discuss the use of statistics in assessment. So what are the reasons why we apply statistical concepts when it comes to assessment or when it comes to giving the grades of your students or doing evaluation? Okay, remember this, no? The scores that your student will get from their quizzes and examinations are called raw scores. I will repeat, the scores obtained by your students in their pieces or examinations or term requirements are called raw scores. Raw scores refer to the number of correct answers. Okay? So the raw scores refer to the number of correct answers. So for instance, if you have 10 items, and then they got um, four correct answers. The raw score of your student within that 10 items is four. The raw scores are simply the number of correct answers. Now, if you're not going to apply any statistical tool or statistical treatment or concept with the raw scores of your student, that raw score shall remain as number of correct answer, which doesn't have any meaning. Why? For instance, if you would say my students got four correct answers in the quiz, then what's the meaning of it? How are you going to interpret it? The reason why we put statistics to it is in order for us to interpret or give meaning to the number of correct answers. For example, for example, you're gonna say that my students got 10 over 20 or 10 out of 20 items then my student got 50% correct answers from the quiz. So therefore, there had been meaning that the student got 50% correct answers because you have made use of a statistical tool. So that's what statistic is in assessment. It gives meaning in the score. It aids you in interpreting the status of your students or giving meaning to the scores of your student. You can compare the score of your students to another group because of statistics. You can gauge whether your student passed the criterion or not because of statistics. And you can uh, determine whether your whole class have uh, obtained the average score or the target score, the criterion, because of statistics. In order for you, in short, in order for you to do evaluation, there should be an application of statistics in the scores of your students. So that's how important statistics is in assessment. Okay? So now the next part is this. If we are saying that statistics is very important when it comes to assessment, we have to understand basic concepts of statistics or meaning the statistical tools which we commonly use in assessment. And these are the measures of that central tendency and the measures of variability. So first in the statistical concepts are uh, of course, you have to first understand the central tendency, okay? When it comes to the central tendency, we are actually measuring, pag sinabi na central tendency sa Tagalog, yung pagkagitna niya, yung sentro niya, no? And in order for us to measure the central tendency of a given data, we have three. The first one is the mean, the median, and then the mode. These are basic concepts which you have already learned in statistics. But what we're gonna do today is that we will just review and then at the same time, uh, we are going to look into its uses when it comes to doing assessment. Meaning, when it comes to the grades of the students, what do we use? Should we use the mean, the median, or the mode when it comes to understanding the average or the center of the scores of our students? Okay, now, so... First, let us look into the mean. The mean is measured as the summation of all the scores. This is the summation of x. x refers to the score and n refers to the number of your the number of students or the number of your students. So that's summation of x over n. So simply this is just the average of all the scores of the class or all of the scores of the test takers or the students who took the test. 
let's say for instance we have this array uh, this is the data set so we have 13 10 12 17 14 13 15 16 this is your data now in order for you to get the mean score you just simply need to sum up all the scores and then divide it to a which is the total number of the test takers meaning the students when it comes to um, assessment we call the scores as the scores of your students so the total number of scores refers to the number of your test takers also now when it comes to this uh, data when we if you're gonna compute the number of uh, sorry if you're gonna compute the mean so we just add it and then we divide it to n that is 110 the total uh, the total of all these scores is 110 and then we have 8 we divide it by 8 so our mean is 13.75 so that's the mean score it's just the average when it comes to your licensure exam there are some uh, questions referring to the uh, mean score you are to identify the mean score so it's just easy for you to compute because you can just, just use a scratch paper because in professional education you are not allowed to make use of a calculator next um, aside from mean we also have median as the measure of central tendency here in the median you just look into the middle scores but in order for you to look into the middle score you have to arrange your data into an array of descending or ascending meaning from highest to lowest or from lowest to highest so it depends upon you it doesn't matter kung ano ang gusto ninyo in our case we have arranged it from lowest to highest okay so how do you compute for the mean identify first the number of test takers meaning your n we have mentioned earlier that the, the number of test takers is 8 so we just divide it into 2. So 8 divided by 2, that's 4. Okay? So count 4. Count 4 from the lowest score. And count 4 from the highest score. So from the lowest score, we count 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So insert down 13. And then from the highest score, we also count 4. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. See, and see from 14. Our median scores are 13 and 14, but we cannot have two median, okay? So, since we have two median, we are going to add this two and divide it by two. So, it will be 13 plus 14 divided by two. We get 13.5 as our median score, okay? That's it's as easy as that. Now, the last one is the mode. Now the mode, the mode now is identified as the number which is frequently seen in the data set. You just look at the data set, meaning the eight scores. Look at it and then identify what score is frequently seen in the data set. Here you will see that there are two 13. And then, the rest of the scores, isa lang ang frequency. So, ang may frequency, pag sinabi natin frequency, yun yung dami ng tao na nakakuha ng score na yun. So, kung walong estudyante mo, dito sa walong score na ito, may isa na ka nakakuha ng 10 out of your 8 student, isa na 12, pero dalawa ang nakakuha ng 13. So, ano ang mode mo. Ang mode mo of course ay 13. Kasi sa lahat ng score dun sa walong estudyante na yon, tigi-tigi sa lang ang nakakuha ng 12, 10, 15, pero may dalawa na nakakuha ng score ng 13. So yun ang iyong mode. Paano kung yung 14, dalawa din ang nakakuha? Yung 15, dalawa din ang nakakuha? Okay lang. Pagdating sa mode, pwedeng madami. Okay? pwedeng madami. Yun yung tinatawag natin ng multimodal. Pag dalawa sila, dalawa ang mode mo, meron tayong multimodal. Okay lang yun. Walang problema. But, we are not going to uh, just discuss that. The important thing here is this. Ang paggamit ng central tendency, 
depends on the kind of data that you have. Aside from the nominal data, the ordinal data, there are also two um, classification of data. Okay? And that's what I want you to see carefully. So I will erase this and then let us see ano ba yung dalawang klase ng data. And this thing has to be remembered carefully because in the licensure examination, this is being asked. Okay? We have one classification of data is what we call a homogeneous data. While the other one is a heterogeneous data. Okay. When the data is homogeneous, remember this. When the data is homogeneous, the differences among the scores are small. Okay? Maliliit lang yung pagkakaiba ng mga score ng mga sudyante natin. Example, this. This data is an example of a homogeneous data. Why homogeneous? Maliliit lang yung deviation niya, yung variation ng scores. Like 10, we only have 2 difference. And then 17, 5 points. Um, maliliit lang yung difference nila. So 10, 11, 12, halos magkakadikit ang scores ng mga sudyante. In a homogeneous data, um, you only have small differences. That is why the best measure of central tendency when that is the case is the mean. This is frequently asked. Sa examinations, kapag tatanungin kayo, there are questions like, if the data is homogeneous, what is the best measure of central tendency? The answer there is the mean. Meaning, you get the average score. Um, rephrasing the question, pwedeng ang tanong ay, okay, what is the use of the mean? Ang answer, the mean is used to get, the mean is used when the data is homogeneous. Okay, so the next one is the heterogeneous data. Now, when you say that the data is heterogeneous, it means that the scores are dispersed, meaning there are the big differences or large differences among scores, or your mathematics would, uh, teachers would say that there are outliers, meaning when we say that there are outliers, there are scores which are extremely high, and there are scores which are extremely low in a set of data. This is an example of a heterogeneous data. We look at it carefully. So, we have a score of 35, then a score of 47, a score of 90, which is extremely high, a score of 15 and 16, which are low, and a score of 54 and 67. Thinking that these scores are obtained by the students in one examination, which is 100 items. So meaning out of 100, there are some who got 16 and 15, while there is someone who got 90. So this is an example of a heterogeneous data. Now, if this is the case of your data, um, mean can be used, but that's not the best measure of central tendency. Why? Because if you're gonna compute for the mean, mean you're gonna compute for the average, it cannot represent entirely the scores because there are scores which are extremely high or extremely low. So therefore, the best measure of central tendency here is the median. So if the median is the best measure of central tendency here, what you're going to do is that you arrange it in an ascending array or descending array, and then after that, you get again the middle score. Okay? So that will be the use of a heterogeneous and a homogeneous data. Okay? It is important to determine the right measure of central tendency when you want your students to be represented according to their score, meaning the whole class to be represented. Now, what is the use of the mode? The, the mode can still be used. It can also be used, but we regard that as the most unstable measure of central tendency. Um, when there is a question, what's the most unstable measure of central tendency? The answer there is the mode. Why? Because when one score changes, the mode changes. Okay? The mode depends upon um, the number of students who will, get, who will get the same scores. If there are no same scores, there will be no mode. Okay? So what if 
what if all the frequency of the scores are 1, then you will have no mode. Meaning, there's no mode score to represent the whole class. It is important also to note that the very reason why we made use of the central tendency is in order for the group of your students, meaning for your class, to be represented based on their average score or based on their central score. So, for instance, your principal would be asking you, how was the examination of your student? You would just simply say, the central tendency of my class uh, in the examination, in the mathematics examination is 50 out of 80. You don't have to say that um, the setting of my class in the quiz, which is 80, uh, 80 items, is that there are some who got 35, most of the scores are 50, there are some who got 90. You don't have to say that, but you just simply say the central tendency because that's the representation of the whole class. And that's the use of central tendency. It represents the whole class. It represents the standing of the whole class in an examination, in a term requirement, or in their grades. It's the average of the class, it's the middle score of the class, or it's the mode of the class. Okay? So that's the use of central tendency. Thank you so much.